Why can't I get this fire started? I've used 30 matches. I know it's been raining for a couple of days. And the wood could be a little damp and I know the ground's really wet, but I wish I had some way to get more oxygen to the fire. Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Have you ever had that problem? You're out in the woods, you're out camping, you've got all your gear, and you're so excited, you know, and then it comes time to start a fire, and you gather all your materials, and you pile it, you make your, your little bundles, you know, and you step it up from smallest to largest, and everything looks great, but then you can't get the fire started. And you try and try and try. And you know it takes three things for a fire to burn properly. You need a heat source, you need fuel, and you need oxygen. And so if you have those three things in the right combination, you should be able to get a fire started in any condition. And so often the problem with starting a fire is there's plenty of heat, you've got a good ferro rod, or using matches or a lighter, and, and you know that, that you're putting plenty of effort into it. You get it to smolder, you get it to begin, but you can't keep it burning. And it's really frustrating for some people how to keep the fire going. And so I have some methods I want to show with you today that uh, I hope will help you to keep your fire going a little bit better and uh, add that extra special component, oxygen, to help your fire burn better. Stay tuned. Okay, so we've got everything laid out for our fire. We've got our, our matches and, and uh, we've got our, our sticks, our wood, everything laid out here properly from smallest to largest. And of course, we'd pick up some much larger wood if we were going to try to keep this going. But getting this started, I mean, this ground is really damp. It's rained a lot. A lot of the wood is wet. And so we know that we need to increase the heat. And how we do that is, of course, by adding oxygen. So we've got our fire kit here. And uh, so we're going to try again. And then I'm going to show you a couple of devices that I think are really handy to help get this fire started. So let's go ahead and try again. And let's just see here if we can get this going. just doesn't seem like it really wants to burn. I mean, I can light the matches, but I mean, it's almost to the end of my finger here, and uh, it's, it's just, you know, it's not working. So what do I do? Well, other than the matches burning, I've got several devices here that I wanna talk to you about, and uh, I'll show you each one of these in turn. So here are four items that we can use to help get our fire going better. Of course, one of the issues when you try to add oxygen to a fire, especially in cold weather, uh, your mouth has a lot of moisture in it. And you'll notice when you go outside, and, and it's not very cold today, but if it was, and you blow with your breath, you could see that steam come out of your mouth. And that's moisture. And so we have to be really careful that we're not adding a lot of moisture to our, our wood. Also, there's the issue of getting really close to the fire, getting down on the ground in wet conditions. And that can be bad for your, your overall, uh, just the, the wetness of your body, trying to stay dry, of course. And so here's something that I put together out of some, just some old plumbing parts. It's basically a piece of, of copper tubing. It's about six inches or so long. And all I did is I took some old plumbing fittings, and this is just a stainless steel piece here from a, uh, some kind of a flange fitting. I used a flaring tool, and I flared the end of this soft copper pipe, and then of course you slide this nut on first, and then this screws into here, and then I crimp the end so that you get an accelerated breath. So you can get down into your fire and And there's a lot of wind that comes out of that. And of course, this will not burn. You can get this really close to your embers. And that's a really effective fire tool that doesn't cost a lot of money. Just some scrap parts that I had laying around. The second device that I have here is just a supply tube. It's a toilet supply line. It's uh, braided stainless steel. And uh, it has just the, the regular end on it. You can see I've done no modifications to it. And what I like about this is it already has a large plastic mouthpiece. Now the piece that I showed you previously was all brass and copper and stainless steel. So if it's a really cold situation and you're putting that cold metal to your mouth, 
that is really going to freeze your lips. And uh, if, as anybody knows, if you ever stuck your tongue or anything to something cold, you know it can freeze to it. So while that's a cheap option, it's probably not the best option. The nice thing about this is also it's flexible. So you can put this in your pocket, you can fold it in half, stick it in your fire kit, and it's a really convenient option. And then all you have to do is, of course, and that also channels your breath, and being braided stainless steel, it'll take quite a bit of heat. So this is another great option. The third option is you can find some kind of a telescoping pointer. I actually bought this at a yard sale, and uh, it's, it has a little screw-off cap, and uh, inside is a ballpoint pen. And it's designed, of course, for writing and for people in business. But what's nice about this is you can actually take and unscrew the ballpoint pen area, just take this out. Actually, it doesn't work. It's so old. Take that out, and then you're actually left with a really nice opening right there. And uh, then on the back side here, it's just got a cap. You could take and wiggle that off, and uh, you can either leave this clip on here, which I think I will, just for carrying ease. I could put it in my pocket and hang on to it. But what's nice about this is it's really small and compact, and it opens up quite long and this means I don't have to get real close to the fire. Now, if I'm concerned about my mouth freezing to this in cold weather, what I can do is I could take a piece of one inch Gorilla Tape and I can tape around this and make uh, a more of an insulated mouthpiece. And I really like this option and I can go ahead and, and put this screw cap back on here like that. And put this end, this little black end, back in here. And now it stays protected. And I don't have to worry about dirt or bugs crawling inside of it while I'm not using it. So just a couple of options for you and uh, that you can use with something like this. A lot of people use the, the dollar store back scratchers. Those make really good. Some people use the, the telescoping uh, selfie sticks. You take the ends off. But I've got one other option that I want to show you that I think works really well and has some neat benefits to it. So stay tuned. Sometime back, I bought this roasting fork. And it comes with little rubber ends here to protect the tines. But I never carry this for roasting. Uh, generally because when I'm out in the woods, I'm in an area where there's a lot of sticks and I so see no reason to carry an extra roasting fork. But this has a couple of neat items. First of all, it's coated with rubber. And it, like the little pen pointer I just showed you, also telescopes. It also has a much larger diameter end, but ends up at about the same size out here. But we do have this piece right here, which is glued or soldered into this tip. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our multi-tool and we're going to remove this section here either by pulling it out or just by coming back here with our multi-tool and because it's stainless steel we can literally just cut it off and crimp it. And then when we do that we'll get back with you and uh, we'll show you what that looks like. Okay so we broke that tip off and as you can see we've got a little hole here and what we're going to do is we're going to take this, our, our multi-tool, and we're going to crimp this end a little bit and just flatten it out slightly. So what we're doing is we're trying to increase our air pressure. We don't want to crimp it too much. We don't want to make it hard to blow. All right, so there we go. We've got a small crimped end. Now, on this other side here, we have rubber covering the end, but that's easily remedied. So we open up our multi-tool and bring out the knife blade. And all we're going to do is we're going to very carefully take at this end and we're going to cut into this rubber here. We're going to trim that off and open it up and we'll get back with you when we're finished okay. with that. So we got that done and you can see we've got a nice end here and it actually goes all the way through. and. Uh, because we crimp the end here, it won't collapse back inside of itself. It'll only go down so far. That's really important because if you're not careful and you don't crimp that, you leave it round and you push it down in there, you have nothing to get a hold of to pull it out. But as you can see, we can extend this quite a ways. And now we have a nice hole. It's covered by rubber. Gives me a good grip in cold weather. And it's actually longer than the other one. And it gives me a really good 
fire starting tool. And of course this is known as a, as a pocket bellows. It's fairly short, a little bit bigger round than the other one. Here are the two side by side for comparison. But really, as far as the size, this was much more portable. And again, it has the convenient pocket clip, or I can carry it around like that, which I really do like. But it has the advantage of this nice rubber grip on it. And uh, I really think that's neat. Plus, this one being bigger at this end, and fairly small at that end, actually matching the diameter of this, because this has a screwed on end. You can see they're both about the same length, but this has a threaded end on it. But this one is actually a few inches longer. And when you collapse them together, you can see that uh, really size by size, this is probably the most advantageous thing to have and uh, I'll probably be carrying both of these at different All times. Right, so let's go ahead and go back to our fire and let's see what we got going on here. See if we can use some of these tools and uh, see if it'll help us get our fire going. So here we are at our fire again and uh, we're going to try this one more time and we're going to use each one of these various fire bellows to see how well they work and to see which one we prefer. All right, so the first we're gonna try is this. Well, we gotta get down, way down for this. That works pretty good, but uh, let's try this other one here. This is our stainless steel supply tube here. Well, it works pretty good, but again, it's kind of short. All right, so the next item we're going to try here was our, is our pen pointer. It's extended out, and of course this one, I don't have to get down quite so far. Works really well. I do like it. For our last, we're going to try our you see our fire's blazing up pretty good right now. But uh, we're going to try and take this rubber tip off, extend this out, and try our one with the rubber end on it here that we made from the roasting fork. I definitely like this one best. This is a major improvement over the other three and you can see adding oxygen our fire is really burning well now we can add our our other fuel Working pretty good. Now our larger sticks. And of course you can see it's smoking quite a bit. There's a lot of wet wood in there. It's very damp from the rain we've had. But even with that, using these tools, we can increase the heat and the oxygen. And there we have it. Nice fire. I know you can buy similar devices to these on Amazon and other places. And they're very effective and they work great. But I'm always looking for inexpensive solutions. And if you can find these things really cheap, you don't have to pay shipping and handling, you can do a few modifications to something that's already existing, then I think that's probably a wise choice. So uh, for all of you that like to make things and, and uh, make do and figure out ways to uh, save a little bit of money, this is a great option. The other two as well that I showed you. And 
hopefully you'll enjoy that. If you don't want to do that, you can go to Amazon. I don't make any money from it, I'm not promoting any products, but they do sell pocket fire bellows and you can get them. They're not horribly expensive. Or you can go to the dollar store, get you a back scratcher or a roasting fork or something like that and do it yourself. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. Please like, share, and subscribe. And make sure and press that bell button to stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.